Okay, so let's just take a look back at this video that I did called I Am An Oil Man, which was obviously inspired by There Will Be Blood, uh, Daniel Plainview, who was being played by Daniel Day-Lewis. Um, great movie. If you haven't seen it, you really ought to see it. So um, I was looking back at this video, and, and I wanted to see just how right I absolutely was about the stock picks that I made for 2020. Um, back in, what was this, April 20th was one of the videos, and that's this video. Um, I called it Oil Stock Annihilation, and um, basically this was when oil had hit like a record low, considering the fact that coronavirus had started like basically decimating the uh, stock market. Oil was like less than a dollar a barrel to the point where we had... Um, a lot of oil, there was a glut in oil. I think Iran and um, Russia were overproducing and ultimately worldwide we had like a glut of oil and that sent prices falling. So at that point, I made the call to you to buy in to oil. So as you can see right here, uh, DNR, they, now these were the small oil stocks. These weren't the larger oil companies. I made a second video where I came back to talk about investing into Shell, BP, Exxon, Sunoco, like the gas stations you know. DNR was 17 cents, NE was 19 cents, TTI was 22 cents, OAS was 26 cents, NBR 27, CPE, pay attention to this one, CPE, 41 cents, 44 cents LPI, Gulfport was 78 cents. I stayed away from that one. You'll see why if you look now when, in a minute. Silica, 1.28, SM, 1.49, MTDR was 3.21, AROC was 4.10. So this was April 20th, and that's when I told you to take as much money as you could and buy yourself penny stocks in oil. So now we fast forward to what's right now. Uh, this is my I am an oil man uh, list of uh, things that I own. CPE for, in fact, let me put the symbols in order. CPE went from freaking 41 cents. Went from 41 cents to $13.16. Wow. What was it? A rock, $4.10. A Rock is eight dot eight dollars and sixty six cents. DNR was seventeen cents. DNR went to twenty four cents. Wait, where was it? Seventeen. Well, you didn't make that much of DNR. Oh well, I, I you can't be right. All well, you still made money. Hey, that's all I can say. Silica and S and M. I always pay close attention to these two because I put a lot of money into these two. One point twenty eight. One point forty nine. Silica and S&M are now two of my favorite performers. S&M is at $6.12, Silica is at $7.02. And S&M pays a 33% dividend. Now, I could go on and on and on talking about the come up that you would have made if you had listened to me. Like, for instance, there's NBR. There are some people who text message me and they mess. Like, for instance, Matador NBR. Back when I told you about buying these because, things, uh, look at this one, CPE. This is 41 uh, okay, wait, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I mean, the video's there. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't delete any of my videos because basically it's a way for me to look and see whether or not I was right or wrong. Matador was three dollars and twenty cents. NBR was twenty-seven cents. A little bit more than a quarter. If you had taken that spare change that you got under your couch and you bought shares in NBR 27 cents right now for every single share you bought, you'd have $58. How about that? Now, you ain't getting returns like that from nobody else. How about that shit? How about Matador? What was Matador? What was Matador? Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Where, where, where was Matador? I forgot. What was it? $3 or something? Delta Let's see. Wait, okay. Got to go Delta. back. Where, where was Matador? Where, M I, I call it Matador. It was $3.22. And for every share you bought, you are now at $12.06. Now, I again, again, I could go 
and brag and be like, yeah, you know what? If you would listen to me, you would have made all, you know, I could do that. And I absolutely would be right doing it because the video evidence is there. I don't, I don't delete any. And you know what? This is what bothers me. This is what bothers me. You know what really bothers me? This is what bothers me. When I'm driving a car and screaming out at four-cylinder Hondas, those are the videos that get all the views. Meanwhile, if I look at this video where I could have made your ass thousands of dollars based on the little bit of money you had, I only got, what is this? 2,119 views. You see that? I want you, to, I want you to pay attention to that for a second. I got 2,000. Now, in just one video, just talking about oil, if I had taken $10,000 from you, I could have made you over a hundred fucking thousand dollars by diversifying you into oil, right? Now, let's look at somebody else. And by the way, I have less than a hundred thousand subscribers. I'm slowly making my way to a hundred thousand, but I, I'm not there yet. So when I look at these other channels, uh, like for instance, I, there's one girl I watch, a uh, humble trader. And um, I'm watching these other channels. Now, one of the best things about her channel is uh, she uh, pole dances. And I actually like watching those episodes for obvious reasons. She's got 555,000 subscribers. But most of the time I'm watching her video, she's talking about losing money. Okay, how about this dude right here? Um, this other guy, Trayvon James. Well, he's been busy trying to pump up Ripple and after Ripple collapsed because the SEC called it an unlicensed security, he just starts talking about Dogecoin and Bitcoin. He has 125,000 subscribers. Now, obviously, there's a disparity between the number of subscribers a male YouTuber has and the number of subscribers a female YouTuber has. Because the female YouTuber, all she has to do is pole dance and strip. And then all of a sudden, she, like this guy. I don't know who this guy is. I, I can tell you this. My returns are probably better than his. But um, so anyway, I'm watching her videos. And I, see, this is something I can't do. I can't come on here and I can't go to the uh, the strip club and stuff. And I, I can't do dancing and stripping and stuff because obviously, you know, that wouldn't look good on me. But um, why the, the female uh, influencers, they get all they got. She got half a million subs. I get a video where I could have made you $100,000 out of $10,000, probably less. I think I could have probably done it out of five. I get two, I get less than, what? how many views I got? I got 2,119 views. If I sound bitter and jealous, um, yeah, I probably am. Um, I, I just think it's just sad that YouTube has an algorithm that's fucking over my views and and basically making it so that I can't grow that fast when I'm the one making money. I just don't understand that. I don't understand that. I'm very disappointed in them. But you know what? The money that I do make on YouTube that I have invested in the stock market, just like I've been showing you what I do, I'm making my money whether they give me the subs or the views or not. But I'm really disappointed by the fact that I can't pole dance, I can't strip, I can't get guys to stare at my butt and stuff and make views and subs. I can't do that. And yet you've got women up there complaining that they only make 75 cents on a dollar for every dollar a man makes. So this is this is this is the disparity that I'm feeling. But you know what? Never mind. It, it's like I'm not even going to be upset. I'm not even going to be upset. So anyway, uh back to business. As far as I'm concerned and and people keep on messaging me on Instagram. Like, you got to understand, I really don't use Instagram. I just maybe post a couple of pictures on there to flex, and that's about it. Um, and uh, what else? Um, I usually don't use it, but when people are posting stuff, like, they're like, oh, thanks for that call on NBR, or thanks for that call on a certain stock. I'm like, yeah, you, you're welcome and everything. Um, you know, some people charge money for this. Like, they got, what are those things? They got courses and stuff on YouTube. I ain't got time for that shit. It's like, those guys, are, those are the real scam artists. I, I don't mess with those guys. I don't pay for nothing. It's like if it's costing money, I'm not paying for it. So I'm giving out free advice, but because I'm not shaking my ass and I'm not dancing on a pole, nobody's paying attention to it. So you know what? I'm just going to put this video out and I'm going to watch it get like almost no views. And for 2021, I'm going to sit back, count my money and laugh on the way to the bank 
while everybody else is following behind these influences and actually losing because they're putting you into pump and dumps that I don't believe in. So anyway, no, no, no need to be bitter. It's just, it's okay. So anyway, um, here we go. 2021, how do you want to structure your portfolio? First of all, um, as I'm going to mention, Tesla is doing big things in China. Now, the Chinese EV companies, yes, they are coming along no matter what. It doesn't matter about Donald Trump's trade war. It doesn't matter about the uh, Holding co co Companies Accountable Act and all that nonsense that the uh, House and the Senate... You, you know what's funny? These people aren't real Republicans. That's why I have no sympathy for them. These people, all of them are rhinos. Trump is a big government liberal. He is not... A conservative. He is not fiscally conservative. He's got no libertarianism. All he does is talk a big game and he gets sheep to follow him. Be that as it may, his ass is going, what is today? One, three? Well, he's gone in 17 days completely back to obscurity where he belongs. Here's the thing real Republicans, real conservatives don't put together laws to stifle free trade. But these people aren't real Republicans. I am, they're not. These people are fakes. They're all fakes. Okay, no, no big deal. I'm not going to even get upset about that. So my thing is here, where do you want to put your money in 2021? Now, the reason why I bother making this video now, we're about to do taxes. We're about to get tax returns. Taking your tax return and doing the right thing with it means the difference between you making money and not making money. Now, you may notice that I'm hovering over this screen for a reason. Well, the reason is because just like I said before, when I made the oh, I am an oil man video, just like I said before, and by the way, all of my videos, uh, just so you know, uh, I have a playlist. Um, where is it? I have a playlist, and in that playlist, it's called Big Truck Series Market Watch. And in that playlist, pretty much all of my investment advice is pretty much there. Um, the I Am an Oil Man video is here somewhere, along with all these marijuana stock videos where I'm making money on marijuana too. Um, and all of that's there. And it's been there since like uh, March. And let me see what was newest. So they're all there. They're all in the playlist, right? And I've been doing this all year long, especially because of coronavirus, because coronavirus crippled the market and gave us all a chance. People who never had a chance to buy stock before, coronavirus gave us the perfect opportunity to buy in. Perfect opportunity to buy in. So yeah, that was oil stock annihilation. That was the video that I made. And then after that, I believe I made another one. I, I know I told everybody to buy the airlines. Now, even if I look back and buy the airlines, because somebody at one point tried to troll me and they were like, Oh, you told us to buy the airlines and they haven't gone up. Well, obviously it's because of coronavirus. But the thing about it is the values that I told you to buy at, the airline stocks have gone up since then. So, wait, because uh, this is when I was telling you to buy Tesla. Uh, I think, yeah, Tesla was $504 and that was before the split because it started rising to like $1,500 before the split. And I was trying to get people to buy into Tesla. I'm going to talk about Tesla in a minute. But Tesla's doing really big things here. Yeah, this is where I was talking about the airlines. The airlines had collapsed, basically, because obviously coronavirus had made it so that nobody could really travel. So JetBlue, for instance, JetBlue was like eight ninety seven at this point when I was telling you to buy. Uh, what else? Uh... Delta was like $20 or something down from four. Yeah, Delta was $27 and JetBlue was under 10. America Airlines had dropped below 10. And I kept trying to pressure people. I was like, listen, this is when you want to buy this, when you want to buy. If you look at where the airlines are now, now that they're trying to pick up flights again, JetBlue is at $14.54. America Airlines, $15.77. Delta's at 40, so Delta's kind of back, kind of where they belong, but they're not back at the year high, which was like 62. Uh, America Airlines, United Airlines, United Airlines isn't where it should be at 90. But here's the problem, though. The airlines are going to appreciate in value, but they're going to appreciate really, really slowly. Most people are scared of the virus. They're scared of the vaccine even more than they're scared of the virus. They don't want to travel. And, my, you know, see, I'm from New York. 
I'm in ground zero. I'm not worried about traveling because the worst place in the world that I could possibly be, I'm already living there. So I'm not really worried about it. Um, had you bought Boeing when I told you to, you'd be up. Because I, I told you to buy Boeing, man, when that shit hit rock bottom, man. You'd, you'd, you'd have made like 200 bucks easily. But my problem with the airlines is the dividend yield. Look at the dividend yield. Most of them aren't even paying dividends. AirYY, that's a Chinese airline, 82%. CEA, another Chinese, China Eastern Airlines, 1.62. The Jets index is 1.74. You're not getting dividends off of this. Let's say you got money and you're going to buy stock, but you want to actually get dividends off of it because you're going to hold it a long time. You're not like a day trader. First of all, and don't believe the hype, day traders do not make enough money to beat the federal minimum poverty rate. Most day traders make less than $30,000 a year. Day trading is a side hustle. Anybody who tells you that they day trade as their main job is lying to you. Unless it's like Warren Buffett or something. They're lying to you. And even him, it wouldn't be true because it's, it's a side hustle. What I'm trying to tell you is that if you want to build your portfolio, yes, you should be diversifying. But the bulk of my money, let's say you're getting $5,000 back in your tax return. I'm getting about $10,000 back in my tax return when I do it. But let's say you're dealing with half of that money, just like I did for the last portfolio that I put together, which was only $5,000 and I flipped it to twelve. Oil stocks, not the smaller stocks, the big ones, Chevron, Exxon, Shell, BP, Sunoco. If you took $5,000 and put it in there, it doesn't even matter where the price is right now. The thing that you got to remember is, first of all, coronavirus still has these values knocked down from where they should be. Because if you look, what, Chevron was $122 one year ago. It's $84 right now. It hasn't gotten back to where it is. Exxon, $41. It was $71. Royal Dutch Shell, $35. Was $61. $20 for BP. Was $40. Bottom line is that... Oil companies are already diversified. So they're not just oil companies. These are multiple types of energy companies. BP, for instance, does, uh, what is it called? Um, ethanol in Brazil and, and Venezuela and whatnot. These things are already diversified. You don't have to think. They already know what they're doing. They're diversified. These are major, major companies. But the important thing about it, if you put your $5,000 into the bank, doesn't matter which bank you go to, you're going to get less than 1% interest, less. And in fact, you may only get like 0.05. You may only get 5 cents in interest. If you go into the oil companies with that same $5,000, you're going to get 6% for Chevron, 8.3% for Exxon, Shell 3.7, BP 5.9, and Sunoco 11.51. The bottom line is, if you go into the oil companies, now, me personally, I don't recommend that you just say, oh, well, Sunoco pays 11, so I'm going to put all my money in Sunoco. I don't do that because that's not diversified because you never know. Something could happen and Sunoco could go down. No, it's better to spread your money across these things. So if I had $5,000, I'd put $1,000 into each one of these. And if you think about it, my plan obviously makes sense because you're you're knocking out dividends from every single company so on the year when it says what it says is x the when it says the dividend date right here what they're basically saying is on 11 17 2020 this company paid out a six percent dividend on every share you had so the bottom line is your thousand dollars in any of these companies is going to pay you back more money than your thousand dollars in the bank. And that's the bottom line. You're going to get more interest getting this dividend than you're going to get putting it in the bank. The bank is using your money to lend out. The bank is using your money to invest, but they're giving you nothing for it. So if you're putting your money in the bank, it is at its safest, but the risk is may be low, but your payout, whatever you get from them, the reward is extraordinarily low. The risk is low, the reward is low. If you buy the riskiest things like Bitcoin, the risk is extraordinarily high, the reward is extraordinarily high. I'm not into that risk. I'm really not. Now, I do have Bitcoin. I do have Ethereum. I do have Litecoin. I'm not putting more money into those things because I don't want the IRS looking at me funny. The problem is cryptocurrency, in most cases, is a red flag in your portfolio, especially when you travel internationally like me, because somebody might decide at the IRS, just like what the SEC is doing right now, 
somebody might decide, you know what, I think this Negro is money laundering. Or you know what, I don't think he should be, uh, I don't think he should be rich because he's black. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to tax his ass. You know, you never know what it's going to be. But my bottom line is, I don't want these guys looking at me funny. They might, they might say, you know what, he might be down with those African drug lords and he might be money laundering. So what we're going to do is we're going to tax the shit out of him. And then we're going to audit him. And we're going to make sure that he never gets wealthy because if he gets wealthy, he'll be out there making fun of our four-cylinder Toyotas. And uh, we can't have that. So um, no, it's not going to happen. We're going we're gonna to tax the shit out of him. Can't have it. Can't have it. So bottom line is, diversify. I would recommend that you diversify into the big energy companies. The smaller oil companies have already pretty much made most of their comeback. But the thing you also have to remember, and I've said this a hundred times, cruise lines, airlines use about 40% of oil. So ultimately, as people buy more and more of these electric cars, the energy usage is going to decrease. However, people still need oil and gas and coal and all that stuff to light their house uh, during the winter. So these things aren't going away anytime soon. Now, I'll say, okay, 10, 15 years from now, that's when you'll probably want to divest or take your money out of the uh, energy stocks and put it into something else. But in the short term, tech stocks and energy are interdependent. Energy is the ability to do work. You're buying energy stocks can't go wrong. You really can't go wrong, especially with these big, big, big companies. The smaller companies are okay, but the big companies are beautiful. And again, this technology, I can't stop saying, I told you to buy Logitech. I told you to buy AMD when they were lower than 50 bucks. I knew they were going to make big names. I didn't know Logitech was going to get to $100 before AMD, but but they're coming. Logitech pays a 92% dividend. It's really not a lot, but it is more than you'd get putting your money in the bank. If you think about it, the bank is not paying you 92% interest. They're just not. Microsoft is paying 1%. So as you notice, most of these tech stocks really don't pay very big dividends. Apple pays 60.61%. So most of the tech stocks really don't pay huge dividends, but the oil companies do. So your $5,000 might go a lot better in general into the oil companies than it would into any of these other stocks with the exception of possibly Tesla and Apple. And the thing that we love about Tesla and Apple is the stock splits. Tesla and Apple have started a trend that shows people when your stock gets high enough and people don't feel that they can invest, that what you can do is split the stock or you can do fractional investment. You can get these people to give you all their money. And they're doing that to target millennials. Millennials are the ones putting their money into Bitcoin mostly. Millennials are the ones going after these cryptocurrencies. Most older people don't understand cryptocurrency, so they're not buying into it. And they would rather go into tech stocks and energy companies and automotive companies. I like automotive. As you know, I've got Chrysler, GM, Ford, uh, what else? Uh, Chrysler, GM, Ford, and um, obviously the Chinese EV companies um, and Tesla. I um, bought Tesla again after I sold out of it, but I used it to build up other portfolios and to put more stock. Then you also have to think about this marijuana. Marijuana is out there. And a lot of the marijuana that I looked at, some of the main ones that I was uh, showing you, um, let's see, where are they? Uh, those marijuana things are starting to go up because everybody knows that Kamala lock them up Harris. She's going to have to legalize weed as an, as an apology to, you know, for locking up all the people that she locked up. And, you know, most people be like, oh, well, how could you back it? Well, listen, it, it's not about how you feel about it. It's about how I feel about it. And the way I feel about it is Kamala lock them up Harris is going to legalize weed. And uh, these weed stocks are going to greatness. I'm, we're going to make weed great again. So uh, what is it? MJNA, GR, all of these things have pretty much increased in value. And um, you can look at that just by looking at their lows. I, I'm making a lot of money right now off of Endo. And it's weird because Endo doesn't have any news to really show me, but it's, it's shooting up. So I'm fine by it. <laughs> I don't necessarily have to read the news. I just want to make the money. But um, the lows on these things, as you can see, this is the lows for 52 weeks. But the price right now... It's slowly increasing. Vape hasn't come up that much. That was I own like something 20,000, 30,000 shares in vape somewhere. But um, these things are slowly increasing in value. 
And um, I'm a long-term holder. I don't do day trading. I don't sell my stuff day by day. I don't do it. I don't panic easily. When Candy and Neo started decreasing because of Trump's trade war nonsense before globalists and China got him out of the White House, I decided, no, I'm just going to hold it. I'm not going to sell it. And I don't scare easily. I just don't. So um, that, that's just my philosophy. Some people scare real easily. But me, I, got, I put so much money in so many of these different things. And I've reaped so much reward out of them. I don't panic anymore. It's like some people just panic and they jump out windows and stuff. It's like, nah, I'm not doing it. Uh, GE, I told you to get G. I told y'all to get GE when GE was $5. You doubled your money. If, you put, if you'd put all your money into GE right now, you've doubled your money. Same thing about Goodyear Tires. As soon as Goodyear Tires went below $10, I was like, wait a minute. Trump says that Goodyear Tires isn't good? Buy Goodyear Tires. He's not even going to be president a year from now. And look what happened. It started going up. You've only made a dollar per share, but the bottom line is you made money. I don't care how much you make as long as it's positive. Positive growth is good growth. Negative growth is not good. Positive is good. Zoom got its ass kicked. I don't know what. Like, everybody was buying into Zoom and Zoom went up, what, 588 was its high? And now look at Zoom, 337. Zoom got its ass kicked. But you know what they say? They say buy on the rumor, sell on the fact. And they also, what is it, Warren Buffett says, when everybody else is greedy, you should be fearful. And when everybody else is fearful, that's when you should be greedy. So that means when people stop buying something or aren't buying something, that's when you buy it. And, you know, whether or not it ever goes up, at least you own it. So uh, that's basically all I think I needed to say. Uh, it's 9.54. I'm going to be getting out of here in a little while because I'm going to head over to Manhattan. Um, I'll probably post a video about apocalypse driving later. Um, but other than that, that's basically where I am. Um, and I'll just say this. Please don't ask me directly about whether or not you think, whether or not I think you should buy something. Because the problem is, I think we're not actually allowed to tell people what to do with their money. Because then if, if they lose it, then they could blame us or whatever. You know, people who consider themselves influencers. So I'm giving you recommendations. You know, like, you know how they do at the beginning of the show where they say, like when Jim Cramer comes up. Because you know Jim Cramer's full of shit. But you know how they say, um... Past performance is not indicative of future performance or something. Well, basically, I have to say something like that. Like, I have to have, like, a, uh, what is it called? A, um, I have to have, like, a disclaimer. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. What I'm going to do is look for a disclaimer, and I'm going to steal one, and I'm going to um, start making these videos with a disclaimer in the very beginning. But uh, that's the bottom line. I'm just basically telling you what I'm doing with my extra money. You know, I'm telling you what I'm doing with my YouTube money. I'm telling you what I'm doing with my tax return. I'm flipping it into something better and something bigger.